the, the title of my message today is called About Abounding Love. And I really felt like it was spoke to me the day um, I spent the day at the uh, funeral home during the viewings for Pastor Spiller. And that morning, I really felt like the Holy Spirit, and I didn't really quite understand exactly what he was saying to me, but he says, your hope abounds. And um, so that really helped carry me through that day. And I wasn't certain exactly, I, I thought that word was for, for just that time, but I, I felt like just even in praying and just seeking the Lord, um, it's, it's, it's more than that that God has given us an abounding hope. And I believe that is actually the word for this year. Yeah, abounding hope. Hope is the word for this year. And as we kind of come into the new year, I just feel like God's hope will meet us in every area and every avenue of our life. Because I'll tell you this, we've been through some stuff, haven't we? (laughs) We've been through a lot of stuff, especially in these last couple years, and um, you know, it's, it's even started to affect me, and if I'm just being honest with you, it's been affecting me even a little bit. It's kind of like, okay, God, what's around the next corner? Have you ever felt that way before? Okay? And it started, it started to kind of to, to jade me a little bit and, the, and to, to, to skew my perspective. But this is the passage that I want to share with you this morning that that comes from that. And it's Romans 15, 13. And it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you, in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's so powerful, and there's some words in there that even the English language doesn't really give us a full understanding of what is being said here. And this is Apostle Paul speaking to the church, and he says, may the God of hope, this God that we can have good expectations. How many of you guys want good expectations, right? Come on. We need to have good expectations because we serve a good God. Right? Amen? And then so when it says, so may this God of hope, and it goes so much beyond that, but, but this God of hope, and then it says fill, and you know what that word fill actually means in the original language? Just cram your life. How many of you guys want God to cram your life with his goodness? Amen? All right? Praise God. He's going he's gonna to pack it in as much as he possibly can till there ain't no room left if we allow him to do that. And it will abound and it will overflow. It will actually spill over with all joy. And you know that word, with all, it actually means the whole enchilada. <laughs> it's the best way I can put it. I want, God wants to give you the whole shebang. Amen? Amen? So, with all joy, including every kind of joy, not leaving any portion of his joy out of it. Praise the Lord for that. Amen? Amen for that. Hallelujah. And peace, which is shalom, which means a complete wholeness. This is God's desire for us people as his children. And we need to get excited about this, right? Get excited about this. And peace in believing. And that word actually can either be translated trust, believing, or faith. Now, that word has to have a target, and that target is in him, in Christ. So as we place our trust and our hope and our faith and confidence In Christ, it says, the God of all hope will cram our lives with all joy, the whole enchilada, and all peace, complete wholeness. That you, say, so so, now just so we get this right, it says that you, so say that I, that I, right? That I may, what? Abound. 
abound in hope. This confidence and this high expectation by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God for that. I need, I, you know what? You guys, might, you guys might be like, you might be like a few levels ahead of me in, the, in, your, in your walk with the Lord right now or whatever for 2022, but I needed that. I don't know if you guys needed that, but I needed that because this is, the, this is the thing is because of all the trials we've kind of been through, through all of these uh, different, really, that almost seem like tragedies that have taken place within our lives, it's, it's really kind of just kind of beat me a little bit down all the way to the end of the year and just this, this unexpected event that took place of, of Pastor Spiller's home going just before the end of the year and just before Christmas. And I'm like, oh my goodness, Lord, what does 2022 have in store for me? What does it have in store for your church? What does it have in store for your people? And um, I really felt like the enemy, I was given place for the enemy to attack my mind a little bit in that area. I don't know if you guys have, but I have, and started to really contaminate my thoughts. And even as I searched the Lord for like a word for 2022, I felt like, okay, Lord, is it going to be like, is it going to be repentance? And, you know, and it, and it was me like really just trying to force God to speak and saying, okay, God, is it going to be long suffering? Is it going to be perseverance? What's it going to be, Lord? And over and over again, I just kind of kept going to him and saying, like, God, like, what do you have? I had this attitude of, of this year is going to be tough. It's going to be a tough year ahead of us. And it wasn't until, like, I really just quieted myself. I really felt like the Lord just corrected me on this and said, son, you need an attitude change. <laughs> and I'm thankful for that. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all relate a little bit? Is God giving you an attitude adjustment once in a while? Just once in a while? I needed an attitude adjustment. Yeah, daily. Yeah, moment by moment at times, right? And um, I needed one, you know. And then I started to, as God started to speak this word hope into me, I started to, like, he started to just, like, start to saturate me with his scriptures and his words and his promises for his children and, like, as I felt like he was just flooding my life with these things, like, I'm seeing all of these incredible promises that God has in store for his children. It doesn't mean that we're not going to face um, difficult things. I'm not saying that 2022 is going to be a, a cakewalk. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that the Lord God has promised his presence and his power in our life to the extent that we can walk through any challenge and meet any need or anything that arises to challenge us. Amen? And we can do it not only just, we, we can't just survive 2022, but we can thrive in 2022 to the point where God will use us to be instruments of of hope to the world, to say, wow, how can these people accelerate and do so well when there's so many things and so many um, that, uh, circumstances that could seem to be against them or, or to rob them of their joy or to rob them of their peace or to rob them of their security. But we have that in Christ. We have that in Christ. I, pray, I praise God for that. So with that being said, this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to just touch on a few just quick things, and we'll probably come back to this next week because I don't have a time to really get into the whole thing. But what I come to realize in, in, in this kind of walk with the Lord is I have to be really careful of where I'm placing um, my heart, what my heart is hoping for, what my expectations are. Because if, if we're not careful, the enemy knows something. He knows if we can put our hope in things maybe that the Lord doesn't have for us, he will, do, he will start to work his own agendas in our misplaced trust. And that can be a slippery ground to become and have a sick attitude. You guys following me on that? 
So if we're not being careful to allow the Holy Spirit to make sure that we're placing our, our trust in the right areas, the enemy can make us put our hope into certain things that might seemingly look good, but might not be on God's agenda. And then as those things don't start to unfold and we're waiting for the wrong things, our heart can grow sick. Our attitude can become t- uh, contaminated. So let me show you in, in Scripture. Proverbs 13. And this is what the world's doing right now. The world's saying, man, I hope that 2022, I mean, you wa- if, you, if you stayed up for the ball drop and you hear people saying, I, you know, and I heard it last year, 2021, where they says, you know, 2020 was awful. Let's get the heck out of 2020 because 2021, we're going to hope that everything's going to kind of smooth out. Everything's going to be clear sailing. This pandemic's going to kind of go away and all the mandates and all the, all the garbage that's taking place in our world right now and the economy and, and the leadership and government and all those things. And um, we didn't quite see that in 2021, did we? And if we're hoping in, in, in those sorts of things, the natural instead of the supernatural, and we're not seeing anything manifesting, and we're saying, God, will you promise that, that I'm going to have prosperity, and, and I'm applying your prosperity to certain areas, maybe God's saying, no, I'm, I'm working in those areas to draw people to myself. You get it? Proverbs 13, 12 says, a hope deferred, which that word deferred means put off, delayed. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And that word heart means the entire inward man. Talking about the the mind, the emotion, and the spirit. And the enemy well knows this tactic. So if he can get us hoping, which might seemingly look good, in the wrong areas, and we're just waiting on God, but we're just not listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit in that, he can start to cause us to grow sick and slanted in our inward man or inward woman. So don't allow the enemy to to mislead our hope in the wrong things. Be very careful that we are waiting on the right things. And let me, mm, I'll go into it next week. But if you want to study it, read uh, Jeremiah 29. And we know Jeremiah 29, 11 talks about the plans God has for us. But if you read the verses before, it's going to show you something really cool. And I'll, I'll talk about that next week. So, but let me give you an example. And God gives us the antidote for it. It says, but a longing fulfilled. And the end of that verse goes like this. In Proverbs 13, 12, it says, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. It's a tree of life. Praise the Lord for that. And, um, you know, I'm going to jump into some other things. There's some amazing scriptures in, in Hebrews that talks about how hope is the anchor of our soul and it holds steadfast And it talks about some of the promises of God. And I'll I'll touch on that next week. If you want to look at it, it's Hebrews 6, 18 and 19. Powerful verses. That's impossible for God to lie. And basically, Jesus is our source. And if we have Jesus as our source, we will always arrive to our destination. Always arrive to the desired destination that God has for us. Amen? So let me give you an example. And then I'm going to close. It says this. It says, this is my example. And it's, it's recent with Pastor, Pastor Gordon. And I never thought what was going to take place was going to unfold. Not in my wildest dreams. He had a cold. I thought, you know, it's just a cold. A bit over it. And then the cold got worse. And I thought, okay, well, now it's, now it's a bad cold, but it's just a cold. It's going to get worse. And then all of a sudden, I'm getting a phone call in the church, me and Pastor Jim, that he's going to the hospital. So, okay, now it's a serious cold. And this thing kind of just kept progressing and progressing to the point where we are today. 
And we were praying, we were interceding, we were believing in a miracle, we were believing in healing. We knew the church was praying and interceding. But God had something in plan. He had a plan to bring a complete healing, complete wholeness, to fulfill his every desire, his longing heart to go to heaven. Not that he didn't love us, he wanted to be with us and his beautiful wife, Denise, but God had a different plan. God had a plan to bring perfect healing to him. And I believe that, plan, that, that prayer was answered. But if my hope was only in Pastor Spiller's deliverance from that physically, I could miss out. I could have misplaced trust. And that misplaced trust could lead to sickness within me. So I have to continually, when, when this all took place, and trust me, it still hurts. But I had to go to the Lord and just plead with the Lord, like, Lord, what are you doing? And I felt like the Holy Spirit was just, it wasn't a cop-out, cop it was the Holy Spirit speaking. He says, Josh, my ways are high above, high, higher than your ways. As the earth is, or as the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And you just have to trust me through this. It will make sense. It won't make sense to you right now. But it will make sense moving forward from here. And as I started to do that, he started to renew my sense of hope, renew my sense of trust, to start to bring healing and comfort where healing and comfort needed. And I love what he spoke to my wife, that it's not for me to understand right now. It's just for me to trust. I thank God for that. But then as last Sunday, I was here, and I, was, I went over to Denise and checked on her, and, you know, I was one of the last, I came back to kind of make sure everything was shut down and shut off, and I come in, and Tom met me. He says, hey, I want to show you something. And it was getting kind of late, but I'm like, okay, you know. So he takes me back, and he didn't tell me what, and he took me back to the sound booth, and he says, you know, Josh, um, something interesting. So he pulled up the video of Pastor Spiller on, on the week that he was preaching, just a few weeks ago. Some of you already know it, but many of you don't. And um, we went to Florida, and Pastor Spiller graciously said, look, I want to cover for you so you don't have to worry about preparing a sermon while you are away. So I'll cover that Sunday, so when you fly in Saturday night, you just can come and sit and enjoy and and, and uh, I'll, I'll take the reins for that, that, that's, that Sunday, which that's pastor's heart. He was always giving. So, and I'm so thankful he did because the very last Sunday he was here, he was at this pulpit and he was preaching his heart out and he was preaching on, what would he preach on? Thanksgiving is the prescription for peace. Thanksgiving is the prescription for peace, which we posted. So watch it if you didn't because it's a really good sermon. And he was just pouring his heart out uh, to this family. And, um, but what's really, really interesting about this is how God lined all these situations up. So Tom was sick. It was the first week he wasn't here, and he was in the hospital with, with COVID, fighting his life for his life. And um, so that film never got processed. It never got posted onto our YouTube. It never got edited. So Tom's first Sunday back was this last Sunday. And as he's editing this, he caught something kind of unusual at the very end, how pastor closed. And it's powerful. I'm like, Tom, don't show me. I'm going to cry, you know? So, but he's like, no, it's worth watching. So he opens the service praying for Tom kind of giving us a backdrop of all the things that were taking place and how God was in all those situations. And then at the very end of the service, he closes in an unusual way. And uh, Tom actually has the video, so I'll let Tom uh, play that video for you guys real quick. If you want the peace of God, if you're stressed out and you want the peace of God, then you need to start with praising and thanking God. Because your healing mentally as well as physically comes from focusing on the fact that God is not. Uh, God is, yeah, he is God and you and I aren't. I don't have to figure out all of life. He will. I don't have to make everything right. 
He will. I don't have to be perfect. Good thing. (laughs) Because there'll come a day when either through the undertaker or the upper taker, I am perfect. And if it's the upper taker, I'll be there the same time you are. You and I will be perfect together. And if it's the undertaker, I don't know whether it'll be before you or after you, but he'll make us perfect when he takes us to heaven. Before then, you can't be, you won't be, and it doesn't matter. Because we're all imperfect. We all need Jesus. Does that make sense? He, the Holy Spirit was leaving his address right on the table. That was the last words he said before he closed in prayer. He knew where he was going. The Holy Spirit already had arranged it all. And he's saying, you know what? I might be called home before you, but you know, you'll know where I am, and I'll be waiting there for you. Praise the Lord. So that's our hope. Our hope is in him. Our hope is in his promises. Our hope is in the future that he has secured for us. We praise God for that. Everything else is just detail, right? Right?